everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning back in. Yesterday, I ran into a buddy of mine at our local hardware store, and we got to talking about fishing, and he was telling me about how it's been tough fishing in one of his favorite rivers because it is super muddy. He said it's like the color of chocolate milk right now, and just he wasn't able to get any bites. So we started talking about what he was doing, and he really didn't alter his approach much. He was still throwing some smaller finesse-style baits, and it just didn't generate any bites for him. And I think that's a pretty common mistake is, well, first, the, the idea that you can't really catch anything in really muddy water. And second, the idea that, you know, a small finesse bait or what you had been using is still going to work when your clear water turns into mud. Uh, you definitely need to alter your baits a little bit. And that got me thinking about, you know, what some of my favorite dirty water, you know, chocolate milk colored water uh, baits are. You know, I relayed these on to my buddy and I thought this would be a good topic for the rest of you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I truly keep it simple anytime I encounter that really, really muddy water. Uh, I think there's a handful of baits that excel better than other baits and therefore it almost makes me feel more comfortable because I know I can limit down the baits and the number of rods I need to a select few. Really, there's only four that I'll go with. Uh, but more so than that, one thing that you need to recognize is that generally speaking, the muddier the water, the shallower you can fish. The fish don't tend to live super deep, or even if they do, do live super deep in really muddy water, they tend not to bite nearly as good. So your best odds are fishing shallower cover you know those fish are going to be condensed to a smaller amount of water and therefore your bait is going to have a greater likelihood of coming by them so if you're talking about super muddy water the fish aren't really going to be able to see your bait so you want a bait that's going to create disturbance it's going to allow those fish that can't see the bait to feel your bait and be able to locate it as it's being retrieved past them and that's the key right you want to create something that creates disturbance and gives off uh, enough water displacement to allow that fish to track it and catch it before you reel it in and make another cast. You know, that's one thing that happens a lot, I think, is people tend to make uh, too fast of a retrieve, and therefore they may be fishing past fish that are active, they just aren't able to find their bait because you're not giving them enough time to locate it. So generally speaking, what I'm looking for are big bulky baits that give off a lot of vibration, a lot of water disturbance, and that I can still fish at a slow pace because I need that fish to be able to track it. So these four baits, guys, will get the job done in some form or fashion. And I'll go through each one. First and foremost, it's always a great idea to have a big jig. You know, this is a Dirty Jig Scott Canterbury flipping jig with a Berkeley full-size chigger craw on the back. I want a big, bulky jig. A lot of times I'll throw rattles on it as well. And this is what I'm going to fish around isolated pieces of, of cover. If I know I've got a lay down or a stump or a rock outcropping, I'm going to throw a jig in there and just slowly work it around. Try to hit as many uh, pieces of the tree or it bounce it off as much of the rock as I can just to allow the fish to identify this bait. You know, it's a big bulky bait, moves a lot of water. The fish love jigs in really muddy water. And one thing to note, anytime you're fishing muddy water, generally those fish are gonna be even tighter to cover. It gives them kind of that safety of a home base feel. So if you do encounter laydowns or stumps or you know any of those isolated targets, a big jig is a really good way to go. And this is for all species. This is not just for largemouth. This is for spotted bass, smallmouth. You know, all the bass species tend to follow this and they'll all eat a big jig. So I've always got a big jig tied on. My favorite color is, you know, some form of black and blue or all black with a little bit of chartreuse in it, the purples. You want your darker hues. That seems to work really well. Uh, and again, you want to tip it with a trailer that's going to create some vibration from, you know, flapping legs and appendages. So once I've got that, that's what I'm going to slow down and fish all isolated pieces of cover with. In between those isolated pieces of cover, I've got three baits that I like to use. The first is a nice square, a nice larger size square bill like this Berkeley square bill. 
Uh, this is the 7.5. It runs down to seven and a half feet. Uh, just a nice, big, loud bait that will create a lot of water disturbance. And it, it allows you to fish, you know, from the bank, from inches of water down to, you know, this bait runs down to seven, seven-ish uh, feet of water. So if you're going down, say, a, a rocky bank or a 45-degree bank, this is a really good option. Any, any sort of crankbait that throws a lot of water disturbance, and you're going to want to use it in either your bright hues or again your dark hues you know like dark reds red and black uh your so your craw color type things work really well as well as your chartreuses uh and you know even whites just a bright colored bait is what you're looking for and you need to you just need to have something that's loud again i like to go with rattles just to create that disturbance and let the fish know that my bait is there my next uh you know another one of my favorites is to go with a big thumping spinner bait like this this is a angler assets it's the profit spinner bait they have some great color combinations specifically for muddy water you can get different color blades i like to go with a red or an orange blade along with a big uh, gold colorado blade but because of those colorado blades you can retrieve this at an extremely slow pace uh, really just kind of just throw as much water as possible. You know, I'm trying to usually keep it close to the bottom and either bump off any objects or, you know, create some disturbance just by putting some vibration into my rod tip as I'm, as I'm reeling it. But a spinner bait is probably one of the most time proven muddy water baits that you can find. And generally speaking, you want some sort of bright color, you know, the chartreuses and the whites with the, the hot orange and uh, the gold blades are kind of the standby when it comes to fishing muddy water. So you gotta have a really good muddy water spinner bait. And last but not least, you know, if I'm fishing someplace that has a little bit of grass in it and, you know, just an area that's a big shallow flat, again, another great option would be your chatter bait. This is the jackhammer. Uh, my favorites again would be in still a white shad color or then go the opposite the dark hues uh that either have black and blue in it or even a little bit of red mixed in but a chatterbait is another great bait for throwing disturbance i've got the berkeley the deal on there as a trailer and you know this is more of the bait where if i'm like i said on a big shallow flat say in the back of a of a creek arm that's when i'm going to be throwing the chatterbait or just the square bill, or even the spinner bait. They all work great in those scenarios, but generally speaking, I'm throwing the uh, the square bowl if I'm fishing more of a chunk rock bank and I'm fishing the spinner bait all over the place, really. This is great for all different, very, uh, all, all the different types of cover that you're gonna run into, and the chatter bait's gonna be more for the bigger flats that I'm fishing. But those four baits, guys, are what you need for fishing muddy water. There are, I'm sure, other baits. I'm sure a lot of you guys will share in the comment section your favorite muddy water baits. But I'm telling you, time in, over and over, these four baits are what get it done in every tournament that encounters muddy water. So, guys, those are the four rods you need to have rigged up. I hope this was helpful. Don't be intimidated by muddy water. Muddy water can actually make for really good fishing, especially in certain times of the year. In the spring, when that mud warms up, that can attract the fish to it. And generally speaking, the fish are accessible because they're in shallow water. And shallow water power fishing baits like these get the job in, get the job done all of the time. So head out to your lake. Next time it turns muddy, don't be afraid of it. You can fish it. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode.